Welcome back into Cougar Nation. Mitch Harper, Matt Biamonte with you. BYU 3 0 on the season. And our question of the day today What gives you confidence this year's 3 0 start for BYU football will lead to more success in Big 12 play? Because remember last year, BYU was 3 0 after that win over Arkansas. They took down Sam Houston, Southern Utah. And they were riding high. They were knocking on the door of being ranked. Then it, you know, we know what happened. They ended up 5-7, and 2-7 and seven in Big 12 play. The only wins were against Cincinnati, who finished in last place, and then Texas Tech, who had their third-string quarterback. It was not good last year. So we're answering the question, and we want to hear from you. 801-575-8255. What gives you confidence this year's 3-0 start will lead to more success in Big 12 play? I'll tell you what. A win against Kansas State or or even a Oklahoma State type loss from last year, that would give me more confidence than any, anything I've seen through the first three games this year. Chase Roberts, he feels like there's a big difference between last year's team and this one. I think the camaraderie that we have as a team, I think other players would say the same thing. Last year when uh, we were in tight situations, you know, we were trying to do do more than, you know, we just trust trust each other, trust the guy next to you, love each other, grab you know grab hold and and play hard. And I think last year we lacked a little bit of that. This year we we, we love each other and we're gonna we're gonna play for each other. And every time offense does something, defense comes and supports us and says let's go. And every time we're struggling, the defense is gonna come and say something and vice versa. So I think it's just the trust that we have in each other and how much we love each other. Chase Roberts is an absolute baller, might I add. Oh, yeah. Six catches, 129 yards, eight targets in the game. I loved how Retzloff was working in Roberts early and often. You know, Matt, I had some questions about this receiver unit, not from the talent. That was always known. The depth was always known. But I wondered who was going to emerge as that wide receiver one. We've This show and Cougar Sports Saturday, noon to three on Saturdays, we've always said it's Chase, but would he – you know, produce like a wide receiver one. We're seeing it because he's outstanding through the early part of this season. And I season. like that Jake is targeting him. That, that's I think that's something any good quarterback, you need to identify your weapons and you need to get them the football as much as you can. And I like that Jake is targeting him at a high level. And that, that needs to continue. There needs to be plays run for Chase. You need to get Chase the ball as often as, as, often as you can. And Chase has proven himself, Mitch, to be a very good contested catcher of the football several of those grabs against Wyoming were very difficult catches that he came down with so Chase is playing at a high level this passing game like we said earlier it's improving and and that does give hope that things could be different in Big 12 play this year I thought it was interesting too when Chase after that trick play comes up with the grab the 30 yarder he stands over the Wyoming DB Instantly, you could tell Kalani was not happy with that. Like, don't, <laughs> don't get a flag. And Chase even admitted it was funny in the post game. He he said something to the effect of, "I was trying to come up with something creative to trash talk because that guy was trash talking, and then I couldn't think of anything creative, so I just stood <laughs> over." <laughs> I was like, "I love how honest that was because typically most football players would not would not admit that." It's like, "Yeah, I was I was drawing back and forth and and doing saying this, but." Uh, Chase like, I didn't know what to say, <laughs> so I just stood over him. What do you think of this? Texter 4888. And you can text us at 57500, your thoughts on the game and the question of the day. If you don't want to call in, we'll take your calls. We we love hearing from, from you over the phone line, Cougar Nation, but text is great too. Defense makes me more confident. That's great. But this next part of the text, I feel like, why why, why are we doing this as a fan base still? Bohannon should start. He can run better, and he is better throwing, and he doesn't turn it over. He's thrown three passes. <laughs> he was, I mean, he was three at three. His quarterback rating was outstanding that at first 175. Throw was the best throw I've seen from Gary Bohannon since he Ever. arrived on campus. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. That was a legit throw. Like you knew when he got the call to throw it. He's like, I'm going to make but this no, look as sweet as possible. The best throw of the day, without a doubt, <laughs> and this is why I think Jake is a better quarterback when he's taking care of the football, is when he eluded the sack in the red zone, stepped yes, up in the pocket, no and delivered a dart to Darius Lassiter. That's the difference between yes. the two. Gary might be a better runner, 
But Jake still had six for 62. He averaged 10 yards a carry. And he would have had over 100 had it not been for the holding penalties late in the He's game. He's more than adequate in, in the running game. He's underrated with his legs. His ability to make special plays off script, now that gets him in trouble a lot too. I'm, I'm not saying he's perfect in that regard, but that throw on the run to, to a Lasseter touchdown, that was that was a perfect ball. I just can't believe we're still we're <laughs> still saying that Bohannon should start. Like I, I, I'm not against it if Jake. I mean Jake's played well. I, I just think those near interceptions are where Cougar Nation. Feels. But they're near. They're, they're not. I know, but I think a lot of people are projecting and assuming. Would you like it if that a car insurance tw- company dinged you for your near accidents? Because we've all had many a near accident. No. As someone who got a speeding ticket going to Laramie <laughs> this past weekend, you I deserved hoped, it. Yeah, I probably did. I'm not going to disclose how with the speed I was going, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I was going a little bit too fast in my rental car. I didn't understand the cadence of the speed of that truck. But, uh, you know, I, I would hope that they would just assume, like, hey, I'm going to let this one slide. But the thing is, is that I think a lot of Cougar fans are going, we've seen how BYU stacks up in the Big 12. It is a big jump in talent from yeah. the Wyomings and Southern Illinois. We saw a glimpse against SMU, and he struggled. It's that SMU game, not the Wyoming game. And BYU fans, I think, are projecting and saying, this is what it's going to be week after week in the Big 12. I disagree I think that Jake still should be the QB1, and I don't think there should be this debate of who's QB1. That's why in in the press conference, I didn't feel it was necessary to ask Kalani, what are you going to do at quarterback this week? It's not a story no. because it is Jake's job. But if he has a SMU-like performance again where he's coughing it up and he's making causing disastrous INTs again and losing the football when he runs – then, yes. yeah, you got to put in Bohannon for that game. For sure. But, uh, you know, no. It, it, Jake Retzloff has got to be the guy right now. I mean, he's been – he's done enough. You're 3-0. and And he, you got to give him credit. Even that SMU game, he did enough in that game-winning drive to audible out of the play, pitch to Miles Davis. He's done a nice job. And I think we can all agree, yes, he's got some flaws, but he's gotten a lot better. And I think his arm talent has been a lot more impressive this year than what I maybe expected coming in. John Beck, the work he does on quarterbacks, it's noticeable. He looks much improved throwing the football, a lot more power behind his throws. And I think people got to give Jake some credit on that front. Can we just pump the brakes a little bit, though, on the constant nagging on the starting quarterback? Hey, because it, no, it's, it's, no. it's fun, no, though. No, no it haze is fun. For, BYU no has a high standard you. of quarterback. This is becoming a joke. That it doesn't Why? matter what year it is. I vividly remember, Mitch. Vividly remember. And tell me if you remember this, too. Fans were wanting Taysom Hill benched in, in that 2013 that is- year for McCoy Hill. Like, it's every year this fan base is infatuated with the backup quarterback. Like, we got to stop. At some point, we got to just support the guy. And Jake has done nothing to suggest that he can't get you to a bowl game. His numbers are pretty good. He's on pace for like over 3,000 yards and almost 30 touchdowns, and yet we still get texts <laughs> about the backup. Like, it was 3 0. I just, I just like, at some point, we got to put a little support behind the, the, the guy that is starting. I, it just feels like it's a decade long, or sorry, decades, decades long issue with Cougar Nation where he just <laughs> loved that backup, baby. Yeah. And it's getting old. When he's mentioned Taysom. People wanting Taysom bench. I think back to 2016 when it was Tanner Mangum. I remember it was after the UCLA game that season. I think I wrote a column. You could probably go Uh-oh. search it. I said, Taysom needs to stay the starter. No questions asked. But there was a, a vocal minority, a vocal minority, very small, that wanted Tanner at that time. Clearly, that was... You named the quarterback with very few people exceptions. People wanted Zach benched. Yeah, people wanted Zach benched. Uh, Jaron Hall, I don't people think he wanted- ever... There was never any calls for Jaron, don't you think? I, no, I don't recall that. I, I no, I don't either. He, he went, so Jaron was one. I think Max Hall. Th- there wasn't a lot of yeah, no. But most years, you could point to someone in the shadows yeah. as being <laughs> someone that f- a fraction of the fan base wanted. I, I will say, and I think that the one argument to that is that I think Cougar fans do not want to uh, experience a 2012 potentially 
where you go maybe at season's in, and you, at some point you do see Gary, and he looks lights out. 2000, I mean, you picked Rur- a great quarterback Rur- to bring up, too, because people want to Riley get out. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I'm, look, it's just because that season, if you had some some efficient offense, you probably win 10, 11 games. You probably beat Notre Dame, who played in the national Riley title. Riley broke his back right? at the beginning of the year. And James Lark looked pretty dang and good. And Taysom Hill, uh, Taysom Hill would have led them <laughs> to some wins if we didn't egregiously have what should have been a victory formation <laughs> at the end of the Hawaii game turned into yeah. a knee injury. Central Bank voted Best Bank and Mortgage in Utah Valley. Visit us online at cbutah.com. Central Bank, proud sponsors of Cougar Nation. Take a break. On the other side, we will get to more of your calls and texts. Keep those coming in, 57500, 801-575-8255. We'll preview BYU K-State next here on Cougar Nation.